People often ask me, what is 32-bit float? Was it invented by Leonardo da Vinci in his famous workshop during the Renaissance? Did aliens give us the technology dropped off at Stonehenge thousands of years ago? Both those answers are obviously incorrect. But what 32-bit float is, is a recent development in recording technology, which is a bit of a game changer. I'll give you a quick crash course on bit depth right now so you can understand what I'm talking about. The bit depth of a recording essentially means the dynamic range, which is the difference between the quietest possible recording and loudest possible recording without distortion or hitting the noise floor. So 16-bit has a lower dynamic range than 24-bit, and 24-bit has a lower dynamic range than 32-bit float. The dynamic range of 24-bit is about 144 decibels. This is quite healthy. However, the dynamic range of 32-bit float is actually 1,500 decibels. To put this into context, if you made a sound that was 1,100 decibels, it would literally destroy the entire universe. It would create a black hole whose event horizon would be wider and larger than the space of the universe. Let's dial that back to what does this mean for recording? Well, it means infinite headroom. You can record something and you can clip it digitally. However, if you're recording at 32-bit, you can bring that clip into post, bring the clip gain down, and your audio will be preserved. So let me quickly show you an example of this now. What I have here is the Tascam Porter Capture X8. This is 32-bit capable, and I'm gonna record myself screaming into it, chuck it into Ableton Live, and then show you exactly what I mean. I have set the Porter Capture to 32-bit. I'm yelling into it to clip the signal. I'm now gonna take it into Ableton Live and show you what 32-bit float can do. So I've plugged the Porter Capture into my computer. I've put it in card read mode. I'm just gonna grab this file here, my screen take six from mic one and two. I'm gonna copy it into Ableton Live here. And you can already see here, let me make this track bigger for you, that that is clipping pretty bad. That is just uh, a, a bit of a sausage, you know? And if we play it back, you'll be able to hear that clipping. I have set the Porter Capture to 32 bit. I'm yelling into it to clip the signal. I'm now gonna take it into Ableton Live and show you what 32-bit float can do. So that sounds pretty bad, right? And he, this is where the magic of 32-bit happens. So you can see down here, I have my clip gain for this specific peaked clip. And all I have to do is grab that, bring it down and watch how the waveform, just like that, I have a preserved waveform. If I did this in 24-bit, when I would bring that clip gain down, you would see the bottom of the top of the waveform cut off because of the limitations of 24-bit. But because I recorded at 32, all that information is still there. I just need to bring the clip gain down to get it back. So let's have a listen to it now that I've brought the gain down. I have set the Porter Capture to 32-bit. I'm yelling into it to clip the signal. I'm now gonna take it into Ableton Live and show you what 32-bit float can do. So there you have it. It's really that quick and easy. I have preserved my signal. I don't have to worry about clipping and I'm ready to get started on my post-production. Now, it is important to note that using 32-bit float is not a good alternative for proper gain staging. Proper gain staging is a very important aspect of recording. And so you should really get your head around that and not have to rely on 32-bit because it'll make you a better engineer if you can properly gain stage. That being said, there are certain situations in recording where even the best gain staging will not help you. Situations such as doing sound for documentaries where you really only have one chance to capture the audio, that's where 32-bit float will really help because if you do get a really high peak in your recording, you can use it to bring that down and you can use that take that you just did. Same goes for live music recording. You can have a really, really good live music recording of a band, but say the guitarist at some point accidentally turned his amp up and then he peaked his signal there. If you were using 24-bit, you'd have to scrap the whole recording. But if you were using 32-bit, you could do exactly what I just did there, and you would be able to preserve that entire performance without worrying about that little bit of clipping. Not only do you get a whole heap of headroom, it also gives you a lower noise floor. So if you were to record something very quiet at 32-bit, you'd be able to bring that clip gain up, and what you were recording would come through clear, but you wouldn't get any of that hiss associated with the noise floor. So that's another really handy aspect of recording in 32-bit float. 
It's also important to note that you do get slightly larger file sizes compared to 24-bit when you're recording at 32. The internet tells me that the file size is about 33% larger, but let's be real, audio files are pretty small and the storage that we have now is very large, so it's really a non-issue when you consider the trade-off of having an infinite amount of headroom. There are some recorders that don't have any gain control because they record solely at 32-bit. However, if you are using a recorder such as the X8, which has its own analog preamps, you have to be wary that you set your preamp levels at a good spot because if you peak at the analog stage, if you peak the preamp, that'll be baked into the digital recording and no amount of headroom will let you preserve that signal. It'll already be distorted. So take note of that when you're recording. So there you go. Hopefully I've answered your question, what is 32-bit float? If you have any more questions, chuck them in the comment section below and I'll catch you next time.